Hey guys, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my dummy clip setup and how I use follow actions. This simple setup gives a lot of flexibility for how you can use dummy clips and how you can affect a clip in a lot of different and pretty incredible ways. So you've got your, your dry clip here. That's just a dry clip. But then I make automation clips that allow this clip to be affected. So essentially, this is running through the automation. So, and all these clips are, are they could just be any audio clip, but it doesn't use the, the audio from this. It just uses the automation. This is automated here. And there's several different things that you can do. I'm just keeping this tutorial simple. So what I've done there is I've just simply run this part through that effect. It runs it for two bars and then it jumps back to the drive signal. Or I can have it to where it, it plays until I send it back on my own to a drive signal. And I can do that with any of these effects. So this is a filter effect, this is a beat repeat, and this is a chorus. I could do them separately. Or I can do them all at the same time. But the option that I wanted to have was to be able to send any track that I wanted through this to route through this while I could leave another one completely dry. So if I go ahead and play this other instrument, and these are just things that I, I got out of the Ableton construction kit in the library. So if I play these two together, let me turn this down a little bit. What you'll notice is this part here is completely unaffected, while this part is completely affected. Now what I could do is I could switch this where this one's affected and the drums are not affected at all. So that's the basic concept. You could have as many tracks or instruments as you want. This could be set up like a, you know, for DJing. So this each track here would be a different deck, or like for a live performance, I might use six or eight tracks, all with separate instruments, to kind of play live a um, a remixed version of one of my tracks or a track that I've cut up. So the way that I set this up so that I have the option to run certain parts dry and certain parts through the uh, dummy clips is like this. Very first thing is your audio tracks. You're going to want to send your audio to on all your audio tracks with clips, all the non-dummy clip tracks to sends only. Okay? And what I've done is I've made two return tracks. Very simple. I've sent one return track directly to the master. So this is just going to route from here into here and directly out. So that's just going to be a dry signal. Whereas send A is going to route from here into the first send, and then it's going to go out of this send into the first dummy clip track. And what it's going to do from there is it's going to send that audio through the next track. And then this is going to send this audio through this track and this will send it back to the master. Now all these don't have to have their effects on us. You can see right now all of these are dry. So if I play the part, there's going to be no effect at all. But when I do turn an effect on, for example now, if I turn an effect on a filter effect, it's only going to affect the drums and it's not going to affect this other track here. Oops. Do 
just like so. So that's very cool because without return tracks giving you this option, you would actually have to either route any track that you wanted to have the ability to run through the dummy clip would all have to run straight into this track here and then route through, which means if I hit any of these parts, every single track would be affected at the same time. So this gives me a choice to choose which one is affected. So let me show you how I set this up. So on each track, I've created an audio effect rack. And the way this is done is really simple. I simply drag the effect in that I want to work with. And then I group that track by hitting Command or Control G. I open this up here. And now I have a chain. And this chain is going through the auto filter. And then I right click and I create a second chain. And this is just a dry signal. And then I hit chain. And now you've got these two little deals here. So we've only got two things happening here. So I'm going to highlight both of these. There we go. Then I'm going to drag this over. And as you can see, the, the number one is coming up. That's what you want. Because the chain starts at zero. So one actually will represent two different parts. And then I'll right click distribute ranges equally. So once that's done, I could actually take this, copy, and paste it into each of my other dummy clip tracks so I don't have to do it again. And then the only difference is where this has the auto filter, drag in the other effect, and then I can re remove this. And now I've created an effect rack for a different effect. And that's what I've done with here. The next thing I do is I right click here on the little orange guy and then I set it to a macro. So I set it to the first macro here. And there we are. Now what I need to do is create a couple clips. So in this case, I've got my wet signal and my dry signal. So the dry signal here is going to be 0, and the wet signal is going to be 1. So as you can see here, in my audio effect rack, I've got my change selector, so I'm going to choose that. And this I'm just leaving as is at 0. So this is going to be the dry signal. So in other words, this sound will run through this chain, which has nothing going on. Let me delete this so you don't get confused. Running through this chain that has no effects on it. And then it goes out through the master. However, if I have a clip here, the second clip, any clip with the effect, I want to set that chain in this case to 1. So I just simply double clicked, dragged it up to plus 1. And now when I play this clip here, this part or any of the audio parts are going to run through this affected chain and then it's going to run through the rest and out through the master. So that's, that's how you're able to set up a dry and wet signal. So once that's done, you just uh, duplicate the clips that have the effect on or that's running through this chain. And then you can set different, different types of parameter of effects. On this one, I haven't really done anything, so it's just left as is. This one here, I'm running the frequency from high to low. And this one I'm running the frequency from low to high. This one here is a little bit more random. And what I've done is I've set up some clips here. I highlight all these clips and I come down to the launch section here. And then I'm setting this to two bars, but you can make each clip play for a separate amount of time. But for this example, I go to two bars then I'm going to switch this to first. That means 
this clip's going to play the effect for two bars and then send the signal back through this clip here, which is dry. So that's how it'll automatically turn the effect off. So if I'm playing this drum, so we got a dry signal. If I run it through a beat repeat, it's going to play that part for two bars and then returns to dry. And then I have some that don't have follow action, so these will just play continuously until I hit the dry clip again. Understand that if you hit stop on any of these tracks, it's just going to stay on whatever the last clip had as far as the, the chain selector setting. So if the filter was on, then the filter is going to remain on. If the dummy, I mean, if the uh, beat repeats on, then it's going to remain on. So these need to be on dry if you don't want them to be used. Now the next thing that I've done is I've set up the, uh, the sends here. So let me show you what I've done here. I've come over here to key and I've just I've assigned the same key on track one to both send A and send B. And I've done on two I assigned a different key to send A and send B as well. Once I've done that you need to set your minimum and maximum because when you hit it when you hit a key it's just going to do one of two things so it's either going to go to your your minimum or your maximum and I do the same with both of these so that way when I hit a key while one's being turned all the way up the other one's simultaneously being turned all the way down that way for example if you're running a dry signal you will not be able to tell the difference between one or the other so it makes a very clean switch And same for the other one. So now I could keep this one here dry and set this one here to be wet. In other words, be affected. And I could go ahead and turn on whatever dummy clips I want. And that's the basic setup. So what I'll do is I will turn this into a song file and I'll make it available for you guys to download. I hope you like it.